welcome to another episode of the Crafty Goblin. Today we're going to be working on some brickwork. I've separated the uh, whole tutorial into three stages. The first, I'm going to show you how to make a stamp. Second, we're going to use the stamp. And third, we're going to paint the bricks. So to begin with, we're going to make the stamp. This is the easiest way I've ever found of making bricks. And I wanted to share with you the technique that I used. Um, this is a finished uh, piece that I did just quickly last night. It took me maybe 10 minutes, if that, to do. So all you need is uh, yellow pencils and uh, needle nose pliers. And that's just for the stamp making part itself. Uh, so you grab your needle nose pliers and you're going to take out that rubber eraser you know the one when you were in school and it made a bigger mess than the actual thing that you were trying to erase in the first place and it left that red mark all over the place yeah you're just going to twist and you're going to take that out if you want to be really picky you can go back and try and get the little bits that are, are left in there but it's not going to make a big difference because as you use it as a stamp it's not going to go all the way down. So what you twist off at the very beginning is is probably going to be just fine. You're going to have that much left. So what you do then, you use the pliers to start making a rectangular shape. Um, if you want to try cobblestone, definitely try other shapes as well. Uh, today we're just going to do a generic brick shape. So I'm doing my best to form two long ends and two short ends and uh, it's very very malleable uh, do be careful uh, because it is so malleable uh, sometimes you can kind of rip the uh, I'm guessing it's some sort of aluminum that the uh, the tip is made out of uh, so just be careful as you're going along but don't worry about it because for a dollar twenty five at Dollar Tree you can get ten of them uh, so I guess maybe in the states it might be about 10 cents per so for 10 cents you can make yourself the best brick stamper you've probably ever ever tried before once you've got the desired shape you're good to go and it really is that simple for a brick stamper that inexpensive and that simple to do looks like we're done So for the second part of this tutorial, we're going to actually use the stamp. I'm going to show you both on pink insulation foam as well as on uh, the foam core that you can get from the dollar store as well. So we're just going to start out here using the pink insulation foam. I cut out a small piece just to show you guys. Uh, generally, I like to start in the lower left hand corner and apply some pressure. And there you go. Pops right down and then you go to the next one. You put it right next to it so it's creating uh, sort of the grout area on its own that's so pushed down. Feel free to go back over them if you're feeling like you don't like the one previously as much. It's not going to be a big deal though once they're all set out and done. You're not going to notice it and if they aren't perfect it's just going to add to a sort of an aged brick look and you're going to like it in the end I promise. Normally I do one layer at a time, but I just wanted to show you how you would stack the bricks here. So sort of put one in the middle going on the next one and then always go smack dab in the middle of the next one. And you fill up your entire piece using the punch. You don't have to measure anything. You don't have to outline anything. This punch does it all for you. And there you can see the uh, the effects starting to take place there. I'm pretty happy with uh, with how it's coming along. And there you can see the third layer starting out as well. Sometimes they take more pressure than other times, just however you feel comfortable. And if you make a mistake, it it's not a big deal. You can always cut that piece off if you want, or use it as the mistake that it is, and 
and uh, make it more ruin like. And there you go, you're starting to see the effect now of the bricks and you've got the first layer, the second layer, and you can you can see that they're definitely looking good. Alright, so that's on the pink foam, and that's the finished pink foam that I've done there for you, so you can get an idea of what it looks like before it's all painted. Again, it might have taken me 10 minutes to do the whole thing. It's really, really quick once you get going. It's a really neat effect. And then what I'm going to do, I have some black foam core. What you do with the foam core is you just grab one corner and rip it off. Mine does this nice and easy. It's from Dollar Tree, $1.25 for a whole sheet of it. And it rips off that easily. I don't have to do anything like soaking it or anything. It just comes right off. And then I grab my stamper that I've made, and we do the same thing that we've done on the pink foam. We're doing that on the foam core into the white itself. Now I'm going to zoom in here so you see a little bit better. Unfortunately, it doesn't doesn't quite uh, show up as clearly as I was hoping, but uh, you can see you going along, and really you can just sort of zoom zoom along here do 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 and there you've got uh, almost two levels done and you see the effect and it's so quick it's so amazingly quick and you'll be so happy with the outcome of it and you can judge for yourself how much you want to press down and how much you don't want to press down. You obviously, you don't want to go all the way through to the paper in the foam core. And there we go. It's all done. All very quick. You don't have to measure a single thing. You don't have to use that pencil to write anything down. We're just using it as a punch. And now for part three, we're just going to show you how to do a very basic brick painting. Uh, this is more of an orangey red brick. So you start off with tan. And then we're going to add later on the cinnamon brown, the deep red, and a bright orange. So those are the only four colors that you need. I got all of mine from the dollar store. So to begin with, we've got our tan color. And we're going to paint our entire base in the tan color. I like to use my lid, especially when I know I'm going to be using quite a bit of it because then I don't make any any waste at all. I know I just keep going back to the lid and uh, I'm going to show you to begin with. Uh, we're going to paint up the foam core. I've sped it up here. And I'm going to show you painting the pink foam as well. Um, again, I'm just speeding it up. You you know how to paint. If you've come this far, you totally know how to paint. We're just covering the entire pink foam or foam core in that tan color. The tan color is going to become the grout in between all of the bricks. So that's mostly what you need to be focusing on as you're painting, is making sure there's no pieces of pink or white showing through. If there's a little bit of the top of the brick showing, that's fine. We're going to cover that up anyway. And now we're going to take the orange, the brown, and we're going to take the red. And got them all laid out here. And we're going to mix first. We're going to mix the brown and the red. And what I like to do is I grab a little bit of each and I swirl it together mixing it so you've got the uh, the basic idea of what we're doing here it's a pretty dark reddish brown is what we're going for obviously it's a deep red and a cinnamon brown it's not the darkest brown it's not a burnt umber just a cinnamon brown color and I've mixed it up in there and to begin with 
the reason that we're doing this color is to pull out some of the bricks in particular. Bricks never are all the same color. So what we do here is we paint um, not in any specific sequence. You want it to look as random as possible. So what I've done here is just painted. Sometimes I like to join an upper and a lower brick together. Uh, and you get a good idea of what that looks like. And then for the next step, we're mixing the brown and we're mixing the orange together. So we're getting a really, really deep, deep orange color, um, which is where we're getting the majority of the brick color from. And as you mix that, you'll see the color that I've achieved here is kind of like a, a pumpkin color, a pumpkin latte perhaps. And for that, we're going to use a drier brush, but not a full dry brush. Um, just a brush with not quite as much paint on it. And you're going to go over the entire thing, even the red bricks. And you're going to see why we're doing that in a second. Because as we're done here, the red still shows through the bottom. And you can see that there is some bits and pieces. And then what I like to do sometimes is just take the brown on its own and add a couple of brown bricks just to have a couple brown ones to stand out on top of the the orange. You don't want to paint the red ones in brown. Just paint that on top and then when you're done you've got a brick wall that looks like this. And if I do say my, so myself, this was a pretty neat thing. Um, and I'm going to be making a lot of brick buildings now because it is just so completely easy and I think it looks pretty great when it's done. And uh, so if you guys have tried this as well, take some pictures and, and post them. Let me know what you think. And uh, I hope this technique works for you as well as it did for me. I know my husband was pretty stoked when he saw it. So have some fun, make a mess, and make some bricks.